Welcome to a crash course in U-types. In Unreal C++, you'll spend a lot of your time interacting with these four things, that is U-classes, U-structs, U-enums, and U-interfaces. So let's take a high-level view of each of those. So a U-class is the first-class citizen of the engine. There's a whole object system. So we start off by writing just a regular class. So they inherit from U-object or one of the derived types. And so to make this a U-class, what you have to do is prefix it with a macro and then give it a generated body. So Unreal has a tool called the Unreal Header Tool, which acts as an additional compilation step. So before you compile your C++ code, Unreal Header Tool will come through here, read the header file, and generate some code for you to enable features like reflection. So U classes can do a lot. They can have data, so U properties, and they can have functions. So notice that these are U properties and U functions. You can write plain old data. You can write plain C++ functions and variables in addition to these U functions and U properties that are exposed to the engine. So if we want this to be used by the scripting tools in the editor, so blueprint, we have to expose this to blueprint. And so we can say blueprint type, which allows blueprints to use this as variables. And we can say blueprintable to allow this to be inherited by blueprints. Now, if we try to compile this, we'll actually get an error because part of the feature set of U types is that you need to prefix the type name with the type it is. So we are inheriting from U object, which means we need to prefix this with U. For actors, which is a subclass of U object, we would actually prefix this with an A, but since we're just doing a plain old U object, we'll just use U here. Now, if we want this property to be accessible in the editor, we need to expose it. So the first is editing the property. Edit Anywhere will let you edit this property basically anywhere in the editor. And if we want scripts to be able to read and write to it from Blueprint, we can say Blueprint Read Write. And the same thing, if we want Blueprint to be able to call this function, we can say Blueprint Callable. And just for testing sake, we'll make this all public. So we can just add our include and compile. So let's create a Blueprint subclass of our code class. It was my U class. So here it is. Select it. And if we open up the class, we can see that our property is here and we can change the value of it in the blueprint. We can also call the function. And so here's how our U function and our U property was exposed from the U class. The next type we should cover is U struct. So start off by just writing a struct. U structs have the U struct macro above them. Again, this isn't really a macro. It's a thing that the Unreal header tool sees and processes. We also need to add a generated body. So U structs are mostly just data. They don't inherit from like some sort of U struct thing. They're just a struct. U structs also need to be prefixed with F. F is kind of the catch-all prefix for things. So F is the prefix for structs. There's U for U objects, A for actor, I for interface, E for enum, S for slate, and F for structs. U structs can have U properties. They can have plain old C++ variables, but they cannot have view functions. You see that we get a compiler when we try to add a U function to a U struct. So U structs are like data and they shouldn't have U functions in them. You technically can add a C++ function to them that's not exposed to the editor via being a U function, but as far as the editor and engine is concerned, U structs are just data. So I'm going to change the name to make this easy to find in the editor, my U struct. So if we want to expose these properties to the editor, there's a few things we should do. You can have just a U property, but that is not going to be changeable in the editor or in Blueprint. So we can expose edit defaults only and Blueprint read only. So this will let Blueprint read the data and scripts, and this will let you change the data in the editor. If we want Blueprint to make variable types of this struct, we need to flag this as Blueprint type. So now a blueprint can create a variable and store a struct in it. If we just were to make, by just making this one a U property, it's not going to be tweakable in the editor, but it's technically still part of the reflection system and we can use that in code. The other thing to know about U structs is that they are garbage collection safe. If 
the U struct is used in a context that it's safe. So let's say we have a U property for a pointer to a U object, and this struct should keep it alive. It should not be garbage collected. So I have a pointer, and with U structs, it's important to initialize these to be null pointer because there are some contexts where a U struct is not mem zeroed, and this could be a garbage address. And so that can create issues where the editor is trying to use the reflection system to find an object or data asset, and it has a garbage address and just creates issues. So with U structs, always initialize your properties or use a class that does that for you. So this one should set it to null pointer. So back to the garbage collection. This is safe if the U struct is used in a context that's safe. So let's add this U struct to our U class. So if we just said my U struct, my struct data, this is not GC safe. We need to make it a U property. And now the garbage collector can see this data and know that there's a reference to this object and to this object if we had set this to something valid later. The properties within a uStruct are GC safe if the uStruct is used in a context where it's GC safe. And uStructs are not mem zeroed, so you should initialize them or use a class that initializes them internally. U classes are mem zeroed, and so you can add a, a pointer here without actually explicitly setting it to null pointer, but I do it anyways, just because I'd rather not think about it. Let's make sure we add our includes. Ustructs are nice for a couple of reasons. Is that it lets you get around some limitations. So, for example, if we try to have a 2D array where we have an array that holds an array of objects, you'll see that in the new class it won't let us do that. Make sure to include the proper array. So if we make this a U property, and we have an array of an array of objects and try to compile that. We get a compiler, t array of object cannot be used as a value of t array. So if you needed a 2D array, how could you do that? Well, what you could do is make that a property of a struct. So now we have a single array of structs, and if we go to the struct, we can make an array there. So if we try to compile this, we need to make sure we spell the containers correctly and then include. Also fix our typos. And as you can see, that compiled. So you can use uStructs to achieve nested containers. So you can have an array of an array of an array or other things like hash maps. The next thing is uenums. So if we were to just define a regular C++ enum, To make this an enum, all you need to do is say you enum at the top. Now it does generally need to have the e prefix, just like the other u types. So add an e to your enum type, and then you can just add values to it. U enums have some special features, so if you add comments, it gives a description in the editor. And we can expose u enums to blueprint by making them a blueprint type. This allows blueprints to hold variables of this enum type. So if we compile that, actually, so let's just add this as a variable to our U class to test it. Compile that. We can see that in our class defaults, we now have the my test enum, and we can read the comments, which is what we specified in the C++ comment. So I typed the second value with an explanation mark. So we can change that here. And the fact that it is a blueprint type lets a blueprint just add a variable. So my uenum, and we can add additional variables to the one that's in code. And lastly, we have u interfaces. They are perhaps the most complicated u type. So there's two things we must implement. The first is what I call the bullet plate type. And then there's the thing we actually inherit from. So for the bullet plate type, what we need is a class that inherits from the U interface. Now, because this inherits from something with U, we put the U prefix here, and we will need to give it a generated body. Now, at the top of this, we have a new macro. It is U interface. 
So this is what I consider the boilerplate type. It just is some code we have to write to make sure this interface works. But the thing we actually inherit from is something different. So we write a class with a matching name except for the prefix should be i. And it does not inherit from anything. However, it also needs a generated body. So we can create virtual functions for code to override. And we can also create functions for blueprint override. We can do blueprint implemental events or blueprint native events. Now C++ doesn't really have the concept of interfaces like other languages do. C++ just has multiple inheritance. So when you want to use interfaces in C++, you kind of just pretend that the other classes you inherit from are interfaces. And so let's make our U class implement this interface. On our header tool, UHC will let you inherit from multiple interfaces. So we are inheriting from the interface that has the I, not the U. So if we go to that, that's the one with all the functions in it not this boilerplate type that has nothing in it other than a generated body. So let's compile that. So that compiled successfully. Now notice in our U class, we have these interface functions and we can implement the event. We can right click on that one and implement the event. And so we've implemented these two events from the interface. So when something calls the interface function, it'll invoke these events and the blueprint can run some script. We can also override our virtual function. And so that is how you can achieve an interface that can have blueprint events and code events. However, so if we go to create a new blueprint, so I've created a blueprint that is only a U object. It, there's no code class associated with it. Let's open that up. So if we go to the class settings, we actually can inherit from our code interface. And we can override our events and everything. And so this is how Blueprint inherits from interfaces. You just add the interface here. However, we can't make a variable for the interface type. So it's no longer here. The type is not available for us to make variables. But if we come over to our boilerplate class, we can say type and then compile that. We can now go in here and say my code interface and set a variable to that type. And so that is a crash course on U types. Just to get through that again, the main thing you interact with is the subclasses of U object, like actors and widgets and everything. This is kind of the top level object. So this is a U class and we make it a blueprint type for variables and blueprintable so you can subclass it. And so a U class is defined by having this U class macro up top. It has a generated body internally and it inherits from a U object. It can multiply inherit from many interfaces that conform to the interface pattern. U classes can have properties and U classes can have functions. U classes cannot have arrays of arrays of objects that are U properties, but they can have an array of U structs that internally have containers. So we can have an array and array through that way. And they can hold U enums as standard U properties. U structs are kind of like data types. U structs are defined by having the generated body inside of a struct and also the macro U struct and optionally blueprint type. U structs can expose their properties to the editor with the edit specifiers and the blueprint read write specifiers. U structs can be garbage collected safe if used properly by making them a U property and a U type. U structs are not zero initialized where or U classes are, so it is good to initialize all your properties or use a class that does the initialization in its constructor. U enums are rather simple to write. So you just write a standard enum, flag it as being a U enum. And then you can define values in it and the comments are exposed to the editor. U interfaces are rather complex. There's a boilerplate type that you must define, which has the U interface macro above it, a generated body, and it inherits from U interface. It has the U prefix. And then we correspond that to another type, which has no macro above it, but it has the prefix of I, which is what we inherit from in other classes. It requires a generated body. And then you can define virtual functions and blueprint implemental events and blueprint native events that can be overridden in blueprints or codes inheriting this interface. For code that's actually overriding something like a blueprint native event, 
the corresponding function with the underscore implementation is a virtual function that you can override in your subclasses. Just be sure to call super if you want the super behavior. And so each of the types have a prefix. So u for u interfaces and u objects, i for interfaces that you inherit from, e for enums, f for structs and other types, and u for u objects. There's also things like s for slate, and maybe some other more esoteric things that aren't used as much. And so that's a crash course on u types. I'll explore these in more detail individually and in further videos, but I hope that gets you started. Until next time.